Our God is good. Our God is great. There is none like Jehovah. He is the almighty God. The all-knowing God. The all-like Jehovah. The all-seeing God. We, we give him praise. We give him praise. We give him praise. We give him praise. Because he is worthy. 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 Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Father, I will bless your name for who you are. You are the ancient of days. You are the beginning. You are the end. There is none like you there, God. And there would never be any like you, our King. You are a great and mighty God, a wonderful God. Okay. Hello, ma'am. Oh, Hallelujah. 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 Let me feel the fire. Hallelujah, God. Oh, let me feel the fire. Thank you, God. Thank you, ma'am, for joining us. How are you? Wonderful. Well, thank God. We give him praise. Um, do you want to open? You want to open the um to this prayer? Do you want to do the opening prayer or do you want me to do? You look so beautiful, though. I love your lip color. I love your lip stain. <laughs> oh, my God. Did you send it to uh, Facebook? I want to invite some. Yeah, I did. I tagged you as well. Okay, good. Oh, let us feel the fire. Lord, let us feel the fire. Lord, let us feel the fire. The fire of your anointing. Hallelujah. Lord, let us feel the fire. Lord, Lord, let us feel the fire. Hallelujah. Lord, let us feel the fire. Father. The fire of your anointing. Lord, we need your fire. Lord, we need your fire. Yes, Lord. Lord, we need your fire. Fire, fire, fire burning us. Fire burning us. Fire burning us. Hallelujah. Lord, we need your fire. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Amen. God, we thank you and we praise you. Yes, Lord. You are God. We thank you that you are sovereign God. Yes, Lord. We thank you that you are loving God and merciful God. Thank you because you are a faithful God. You are just God. Yes, Lord. Thank you because there's nothing but truth in you. Yes, Lord. Lord, help us to recognize the truth that is inside of us, God. Yes, Lord. Every weapon formed against us shall prosper. Hallelujah. And every tongue that shall rise against us shall be condemned. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you right now. Mm -hmm. We thank you, God. We just want to take a moment, just exalt the Lord. Yes, Lord. Just exalt him. Just begin to tell him how good he is. How beautiful. Tell him how tired you are. 
there is no you feel like you're just crawling you can't take another walk even though the steps of a good man I is see. ordered by the lord oh lord we are so so grateful we're gracious that you are here yes we want to feel your consuming fire yes lord God, we don't want to be the same when we leave off of this call yes lord god we want to be changed Yes, God. God, we want our mindsets to change. Yes, God, Lord. take out the heart of stone and give us a heart of flesh. Hallelujah. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that your mercy and your will and your grace upon grace and mercy upon mercy and joy upon joy and peace upon peace, God will consume us today. Mm. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Lord, have your mercy. Yes, Father. Yes, Father. Have your way. Yes. God. Yes. Have your way. Lord. When yes. I would do good, evil is always present. Ooh. When I would do good, when I speak good, evil is always present. Oh, Lord. When I try to do everything, evil is always present, God. Jesus. God, help your people to understand that you're right there. Yes, Lord. I'm feeling this heaviness about someone that's going through every time you turn around and be good to others. There is evil in your face. Well, I come to tell you that God is going to strengthen you and God is going to lead you and God is going to bless you. Amen. You have to worry yourself. Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Father. The Bible said, call upon him. Yes. Call upon him and he will answer you and show you great and mighty things. Yes, yes. yes. When you feel like daggers are coming from each south, west, north, God, and west, Jesus. Jesus. The daggers are coming, God. Jesus. And even for those that are closest to us, Lord. Yes, Lord. Help us, God. Yes. Help us, Lord. Help. You said that you are very present. Help in the time of trouble. I just don't want to leave here. I'm just feeling the Lord's presence. You said that your presence, God, will always be with us, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, God, we thank you. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Lord. God, we don't know what each other struggle with from day to day. But God, we must learn to love in the midst of it all. Yes, Lord. We must learn to be kind in the midst of it all. We must learn to be peaceful in the midst of it all. Yeah. Yes, Lord. God, we know that you are brewing up something. Yes, and Lord. Something is happening. There is a shadow of turning. Something is happening. Amen. Amen. God, we just ask you to prepare us yes, for things that we cannot handle right now. Hallelujah. Have mercy, Jesus. Have mercy. Let the Lord be glorified in these temples, be glorified in the earth. Lord, be thou glorified. We're just asking God to be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you. you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I will bless your name, oh God. We thank you for this opportunity, Father, to do your business, oh God. Father, thank you for finding us worthy, God. To do anything in our flesh, oh God. May everything be done according to your divine will, Father. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, J
Speak to your people, oh God. Heal the hearts of those that need to be healed, oh God. Father, we thank you for what you are about to do, oh God. But I will thank you for the verse you want to use to speak to your people, oh God. To bring healing upon them, oh God. Father, we thank you. Thank you. We thank you for what you are doing even right now. Lord, we bless your name. Yes. Holy Spirit, come take preeminence, take mm. control. We can't do this by ourselves. We need you. Welcome, sweet Spirit of God. Yes. Have your way, have your way, have your way. Mm. Use us whichever way you want. Mm. We'll make ourselves available. Use us as you please, God. Yes. Thank you, merciful Father. We'll play the blood of Jesus over the airways right now. Yes. The blood of Jesus who plead the blood of Jesus who plead the blood of Jesus. Blood that of blood Jesus. that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Let that blood continually mm. speak in the name of your in precious Son Yeshua. Jesus. Father, we thank you, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Show yourself you, mighty, Father. Mm. Hey, speak mm. to your people like never before, God. Yes, God. Let them hear you, God. Yes. Lord. Let them know that yes, this is God. Mm. Father, we thank you for what thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, merciful mm. Father. Thank you, God. We bless you. We bless you. Yes. I mm. see you're so you're such a beautiful God. Yes. You're so beautiful, none can behold you, Father. Mm. Mm. You are a great and mighty God. Mm. You are the mm. Almighty. Yes. Who is like unto the earth? Mm. Mm. You are glorious in holiness. Mm. You are fearful in praises, God. Mm. You are doing wonders every other day, God. Mm. So we say thank you, oh mm. Shekin. Thank you, Lord. Thank mm. you, oh Shekin. Thank, 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 thank you, I am that I am. There is none thank like you, you Father. You mm. are the almighty yes, God. He mm. will sit in heaven and use the earth you. at his footstool. Mm. That thank is how you. great and mighty you are, mm. Father. We say thank, thank you, you, Jehovah, thank you, for Jehovah. finding us worthy. Mm. Have your way, dear God. Have your way, we God. love you, Father. Mm. Thank, thank you, Jesus. God. In Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's yes, worthy. he is. Oh He's my God. Worthy. Hey, I Thanks can the feel the Holy Spirit. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes God. Oh my God. Mm. Lord, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you, God. May our worship come unto you as a sweet smelling Sabbath, Father. May it come unto you as a sweet smelling Sabbath, oh God. For we give you from a pure place, oh God. May our thanksgiving come unto us, God. Father, Lord Almighty King of glory. Your children are right here, God. Say, Father, hallowed be your name, O God. Hallowed be your name, O God. You deserve our worship. You deserve our praise, God. You deserve it all, O God. You deserve it, Father. Oh, yes, Oh, yes, may your name alone be glorified, God. Yes, Father, it's all about you, Jehovah. It's all about you, King of glory. It's all about you, about you, our Father. It's all about you. It's all about you. He must suke zile. Mo he la he a kasele he ama. Mo he kasele kasuba ama. He le kaseba ha. He la he was su he kasele. Oh yes, God, you are worthy. Yes, Father, you are worthy, O God. Father, we bow before your throne of grace this hour, O God. Hallow be your name, hallow be your name. Oh yes, Father, he a kasuba. Ma se he ele he a kasuba. Ma he la he a kasuba. He ele kasuba. Hey, la he was le he ba. He kezi le he a masuhila. Oh yes. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. Yes. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. 
It's all about you, Father. Any way you want to go, Father. Oh, any way you want to do it, Father. Do it whichever way you want, Father. It's not by our might, oh God. It's not by our strength, oh God. Yes, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, yes, God. Oh, I Oh, say, he is Oh, yes, God. Yes, Lord. Fire, the Holy Ghost. Yes. Holy Ghost fire. Woo. Fire, the Holy Ghost. Oh. Holy Ghost fire. Oh, we need a change. We need a Jesus. Miracle. We need a blessing. Jesus. Everything is in you. Jesus. We need healing. Oh, we need healing. Yes, Lord. Yes, Father. When you fall into doubt and temptations, count it all joy. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Jesus. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh yes. Hallelujah. Have your, have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way, God. Oh my God. We want it to the Lord. Say so. We'll stay right here. And the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Open up your mouth. You say, let everything that has breath uh, oh, praise ye the Lord. Go give him a few minutes, uh, just yes. a few minutes to pray. Father, just we praise you, God. Minutes, uh, those in worship, God. Uh, we must oh, worship in spirit and in truth. Uh, just Ooh. a few minutes. Uh, oh, God, we forget about ourselves. Uh, yes. Oh, God, we concentrate on you. Uh, take Ooh, our mind off of whatever's Jesus. going on. Uh, take our mind off for ourselves. Uh, let us Worship you, let us praise you. Yes, when we worship, and when we praise, oh God, Ooh, the blessings, oh God, the blessing is in our praise. The yes, blessing God. is in our, our worship, God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, in the Lord. name of Jesus, in yes. the name of Jesus, in yes. the name of Jesus, oh, in the name Father. of Jesus. We we won't let you go. We're yes. not going to let you go. We're not going to let you go. Fire the Holy Ghost. A uh, uh, Holy Ghost fire. I feel Ooh. the fire. I feel the fire. Yes. I feel the fire burning. Yes. I feel oh. the fire burning. Oh. Everything is not like you, God. Oh, God, everything that's not like you, oh, God, Jesus. burn it all for us, God. Jesus. Take it away. Yes, yes. Lord. You want to do Jesus. You want to do it? Uh, oh, we wash you. Do it. We wash you. Do it, God. We wash you. Do it, God. We are the God of changes now. We're sick and tired. We need a blessing. We need a blessing. You are the one that changes now. Oh, God. You are the pillar of fire by the night and the pillar of cloud by the day, God. Hey, God. I 
mighty place, our strong tower. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, my Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank thank you, Jesus. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship thank you. you, Jesus. Thank yes. you, Jesus. Glory, Jesus. glory, glory. glory. Glory, oh my glory. God! Glory, glory, glory! Yes! Glory, 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 oh my glory. God! New glory! New Thank glory. you, Father! Amen! 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 Jesus! Amen! is going to be new in the name of Jesus. I hear God say new, new. Amen. He can't put nothing of old Ooh. into this new. He can't put nothing new into the old. Old things passed away Ooh. and all things has become new. There is a newness <laughs> in your life. There's a newness. Hallelujah. God is moving. Fire. Uh, the devil thought he had you, uh, but you got away. The devil thought he had you, uh, but you got away. Yes. You got to keep pushing. You got to keep pressing. Press toward the mark uh, mm -hmm. for the prize of the high calling, uh, which is in Christ Jesus. Understand this. Uh, yes. It is Ooh. now. God to sit upon the circle of the earth and no one can stand against our God. No nah, one. No one. Mm -mm. No one. Hallelujah. No one can stand against our God. No one. Hallelujah. No one. Hallelujah. No one. No one. No one. No oh, one. Yes. No one. No one. Jesus. Receive the new. Receive Amen. The I new. receive it. Amen. Receive the new. Receive, receive it. Amen. Amen. They've been preaching that for a long time. God Amen. is doing a new thing. I tell you, God is doing a better of Amen. a new thing Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Creating a new heaven Hallelujah. and a new earth Amen. Uh, for the new in us. Amen. Because there ain't no old going to the new. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank, thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank yes, you, Lord. Jesus. And some relationships and some friendship that God said close the door, he's already closed it and you cannot open it back up. It's Amen. already closed. Uh, God said any door that he opened uh, no one can shut it. And any yes. door that he closed uh, no one can open. The yes. door is closed. Amen. Many doors uh, this week that will be closed. God Amen. said I'm going to close the door. I'm going to close the door Amen. because I got to get you to this new uh, place. Amen. I got to get you to this new yes, victory, to this new abundance, to this Amen. new uh, glory. Amen. I yes, hear. Lord. They talk about the Shekinah glory. Yes. yes, they do. But I'm talking about the new glory. Amen. The new glory. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Jesus. Oh, my God. Jesus. Father, we thank you. We Jesus. thank you. While we were praying, right, I have the Lord say to me, he said, do not say, do not ask for something that you're not willing to give. He said, you, he now said to me, he said, you said to do as I please, right? He said, yes. now I want you to just worship me. Mm. He said, that's all I want you to do, mm. worship me right now. Yes. I was like, God, but I thought we were supposed to talk. He said, no, just no, worship. Just worship. And, oh, just man. Worship. <laughs> just worship, just worship, worship, worship. Because, you know, we're, we're getting free. Other people are getting free. We're getting free. Jesus. We need the freedom. We need the shackles off Amen. of our feet, off of our minds. We ah, need yeah, the shackles yeah, yeah. off of our hands. Amen. And the only thing that's going to do that is to refine us fire. Yes, all Lord. The of soap. Uh, we Jesus. are being washed even right now in the blood of Jesus. Yes. We are being cleansed right now Ooh. with his communion. We Ooh. are in the covenant of the most high God and Lord we just want to say thank you thank uh, you thank Father you, Lord. 
Lord. We just want to say thank you. Thank you, God. You got to lose yourself. You got to lose yourself. You got to lose yourself in the spirit. Tune everything else out and lose yourself in the spirit. Because right now, you need a blessing from God. Right now, you need a change from God. Right now, Jesus. Jesus. We're not playing with the enemy. Jesus. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, you are worthy. Thank you, there God. Is there is a new. There is a new. There is a new. There is Jesus. a new. There is a new right now. Amen. There is a new. There is Amen. A new. Not only is he doing a new thing, he's doing a new. He's Amen. doing a new thing for the a new and if God's people don't get ready for this new thing they gonna miss the new heaven and the new earth uh, because Jesus. God is doing some shaking and he said that he would he said I'm gonna shake the earth once more I'm gonna shake the heavens Amen. and those that will be shaken then so be it but those of us that will be shaken and we shall remain because we will not be shaken Amen. about the mess that's going on in this world hallelujah jesus oh my god mm, 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 mm. i need power jesus i love you so, i love you mm. i love you lord today yeah. because you care for us Ooh. in such a special way that's, that's why we praise you Jesus. and we lift you up and we magnify your name Hallelujah. that's why our heart is filled with praise Me. my heart my mind, my soul belongs to you. Amen. You paid the price for Amen. me way back on Calvary. Yes, That's Lord. why we praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Can we lift you up? Thank you, Jesus. Can we magnify you? Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. Jesus. That's Jesus. Why our heart Jesus. Is we pray. Jesus. 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 Oh. Father, we thank you. Jesus. 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 You got to lose yourself. You got to lose yourself in the spirit. Jesus. 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 Oh, God. Jesus, 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 yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Precious Lord, take my hand. Hallelujah. Lead me on and let me stand. Amen. When I am tired Hallelujah. and I am weak. When I am worn through the storm and through the night, lead us on to the light. 
precious Lord, precious Lord, and lead us on, Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Holy Spirit, we wait on you. Yes. We wait on you, Holy Spirit. Yes. We wait on you. We wait on you. We knew we had an agenda, but we yeah. wait on you. Yeah. We wait on you. Yeah. We wait on you. God is great. I don't mind waiting. God is great. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. On the Lord, yes, Lord. we don't mind waiting. You, God. We don't mind waiting. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We don't mind waiting on the Lord. Me. Yeah. took us a different route like 
Mm. God just took us a different route. Right? He was saying, don't ask for something that you know that you're not willing to give. I was like, God, please. And he just, oh my God. Yeah, oh God. Father, we thank, thank you. Thank you, yes, God. Lord, thank yes, you. Mm. Uh, oh, Jesus. Mm, 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 mm. This, this just shows that, you know, God is ever present. This just shows yes. that God is doing major work. This yes, just yes. shows that if you're willing, God is going to heal you, you yes. know. Yes. So if you don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about marriage as ordained by God. Yeah. You know, we started this um, two weeks ago, but we couldn't come online last week, Sunday. But, you know, the Lord was speaking to me about how marriages are crashing left, right, center. Like there's so much divorce, so much divorce. And God said, I am the creator of the institution called marriage. And I created it because I know that it is good. But the enemy has made marriage seem like it is bad. And so people are rushing in and rushing out, rushing in and rushing out. And the Lord told me, he said, the reason why we're all rushing in and rushing out is because we have chosen to play each other's roles instead of playing our own role. We have left our role and we're playing the role of the other. And a lot of us also don't understand that when the day we get married, we're not just getting married to our spouse, yes, we're also Lord. going into covenant with God. Yes, yes, yes. But most yes, of us yes. don't remember that. Mm. You know, and so when you when you don't remember that you're in a covenant with God and you begin to do things outside your covenant with God, then there's going to be problem. And that's why the enemy comes in and does what he does, because a lot of us do not know that we're in a covenant with God and God has a role to play just as the husband has his role and the wife has a role, you know. So today... We'll bless God for bringing our Apostle Katrina to talk to us today. And then we're going to be doing this every week. It's a series where people come and talk about, you know, different aspects of what God wants them to talk about concerning marriage as ordained by God. Marriage is a good thing. Do not be deceived. Don't let things that have happened or experiences, you know, make you think that marriage is not good. God is saying that it is a great thing. He said in the spirit, marriage has a lot of weight. Marriage is the only covenant, is the only institution where two people become one. You know, so most often we get into marriage for different reasons. And a lot made me to understand that a lot of us got into marriage for selfish reasons, like myself, you know. And so, because I didn't have, I didn't have a better understanding. I thought our marriage was all these things that you see on TV. I thought that marriage was what we see on social media, where people come and, you know, post photos and post stuff, and then you think that that's what marriage is about. And so you have this thing in your mind that this is what marriage is, and it's not, you know. And so when you get into marriage and you don't see these things, you know, you want to run out as you run in. But God is saying that, no, you cannot go into marriage for your own reason. You must go into marriage because you want to fulfill God's agenda, because you want to fulfill God's mission. But most of all, go into marriage for selfish reasons. Oh, I'm getting old. Oh, they expect me to be married by X, Y, Z age. Oh, I want to be married so I'll feel, you know, like I'm married. You know, different reasons. People go into marriage for different reasons. Aside from the main reason, which is to do the will of God, you know. So God is telling us today that we need to change our perspective. Even those that are not married, that want to be married. Marriage is not all these things that you see that people portray. That's not what marriage is. Don't go into marriage because you think that, you know, you, you don't want to be alone. Or you think that you've gotten to a certain age and you want to be married. Or people are expecting you to be married. Or maybe you think that this person has money and you need the money. You know, for different reasons, people get married. Don't go into marriage because of anything that you know you think marriage will provide go into marriage because you want to fulfill god's will you know that's that's what i have for us today but today i'm going to leave it up i'm going to leave it um to apostle katrina to tell us what the lord wants us to hear concerning uh marriage as ordained by him amen marriage is definitely ordained by god Hallelujah. If you uh if you understood 
<clears throat> how it's ordained by God, then we would not take it lightly. I'm just trying to find the scripture that I was, mm. I lost it when we was in worship. I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. Don't okay. Me. But marriage is just that marriage is between one uh, woman. I mean, one man and one woman. That is marriage. If you look marriage up uh, in the um, in the dictionary, it, it'll tell you, even in the Bible, mm -hmm. marriage was an institution God created for a weapon against the enemy. Mm -hmm. But a lot of time, as you have said, that people have taken marriage lightly. And when you say those vows, you don't know what your worst times will be. You will kind of flow with in sickness and in health. But when you go into that worse, people run, like you said, they run. The Bible says be willing to separate, but reconcile. So it's okay to separate, but be willing to reconcile. So it does not mean that you go out and you get another in place of him or her. Could go either way. And so I only know how to uh, share about marriage concerning myself. And so... Uh, my marriage, I knew that I went into it being sincere. But the enemy came in and robbed me. Jesus. <clears throat> Ooh, the enemy came in and robbed me. So I backslid. This is my first marriage I'm talking about. And it was God ordained. But when you backslide and when you do things that are against the constitution of marriage, against what God has ordained, don't think you're just going to get up, wash yourself up, and it's all over. No, you're going to go through something. And so you have to sit down. You have to sit yourself down. And you have to examine yourself. And so that marriage ended. I can't speak about him. I'm only speaking about me, okay? Because he's not here to defend himself. And that is what we do a lot. We speak about another person, but they're not here to defend themselves. I'm talking about marriage. And so here I get married again. I get married again. And in this marriage is so, more, so much turmoil because the enemy once again deceive me about a salvation and so I say God what is it that I do he said you stay put and that is the hardest thing to do is oh, to God. stay put the hardest thing to do it's just like a child and they cut up and you got to put them in the corner God said you can't leave out of this ring go to your corner but so many people are eager to leave out of these marriages. Whether you got married at the courthouse, that's your business. You should not have done it. You should have researched about marriage. The vows concerning marriage is commanded, demanded. Decree and declare by God. Mm. So if you are not ready for marriage, and I'm not talking about those that's in the world, you know, they, they it's a whole different story. Talking about the ones that's in Christ now. Yes, ma'am. When we are in Christ and we get married, we have to stand in it. Now, and I'm not saying if you're getting your head beat. I'm not saying if you're getting burned. I'm not saying if you're getting whooped. In, I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is that if you're in a marriage that does not have turmoil, trust and believe you me. 
That's not God. Ooh. Every marriage, I don't care how good they say they look, I don't care how good they hold their hands in the street, they go home and they fight like cats and dogs. <laughs> marriage is not easy. Marriage is a full-time, part-time, full-time, part-time job all around the clock. And I think you said something. I think I know you did. You said something very important. You said, mm, I just lost it. Mm, 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 mm. Wow. See how the enemy come and snatch it? Stay in your lane. That's what you were talking about. Yeah. Yes. The roles. If, yes. If we stay in our roles. And so what is our roles? I'm going to speak about the woman. What is our role? If you look into Proverbs 31, just begin to read. When we as women, let me say it this way. We as women are emotional. And that's the way God designed us. And so when I hear women saying, I don't need a man, I don't need a husband. That's a lie from the pit of hell. <laughs> because God created us for the man. Now, if you don't desire to meet the needs of a man, then guess what? That's all right, too. So women have to know who they are and whom they are. Because the Bible is clear. It says, listen, the husband is supposed to treat the wife as Christ treats the church. And a lot of times it does not happen. And it does not happen. Ladies, please, please just hear me out. And it does not happen because of this. I'm out. Because we get so emotional, we want to just spill it all. And guess what? He ain't listening to none of it. It's a great idea. I'm just saying what I did. It's mm -hmm. a great idea to write on the mirror with your lipstick. <laughs> you upset at me today. And guess what? He'll come out shaking his head and just laughing. You crazy. Well, now we can have a conversation. You have to learn creative things in order to get his attention without going overboard. Our men. Oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> these save men. These save, they, now these save men. These save men. They say they say. <laughs> leading the church but sleeping with every woman in the church oh my god you sleeping with every woman in the church and act like you ain't done nothing and then women you're sleeping i'm sorry i'm going here because that's the way the spirit is leading me it's women, fine you're sleeping with men in the church i'm talking about in the church and then you come in there and go straight to the pulpit and grab the mic. No, you should drop that mic yes. because God sees all things. How dare we say that God keeps our bodies? God has uh, 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 trusted us with our one woman or one man. God has trusted us and yet we have put ourselves out there. And it's not easy. It's not easy knowing that your husband cheated on you. And I'm talking about myself. It's not easy that your husband cheated on you. And you know, and you even spoke to the women, and then the women come into your house. Jesus. It's not easy. 
that's something um not to cut you off apostle but that's something that you know how to i i don't i don't understand how do you get past that because you know i know that god heals and that's something that i because when god said I, I want you to go out there and talk about marriages or then by me and he told me he said at the end of it, you're going to tell your story i said god i don't think i want to talk about my story and then that's where the lord made me to understand that the, the only reason why you don't want to talk you don't want to talk about your story is because you're not healed you know, God made me to understand that anybody that you see that is not willing to talk about their story is because they've not allowed him to heal them. But if God heals you, you will be able to talk about your story, not from a place of pain or a place of, you know, um, blame, you know, but you're going to be talking based on how God wants you to see it. And that's how you're going to be talking about it. And so I was saying, God, I don't know how to move from where I am to you know where you want to take me and the lord made me to understand that healing is a process you know but most often we just want it to happen so fast that you know we don't give god the opportunity to heal us you know so instead of allowing god to heal us we just max all this pain and just move that right in and god made me to understand that that's because that's the reason why there's a lot of church hurt because most leaders are still in pain they are not healed and so because they don't want him to heal them take them through the process of healing they just you know max it up and go into um leadership or whatever it is and then they begin to inflict pain on other people because of the pain that they have inside of them. And he said, that is something that has cast his children that have come to worship him genuinely, you know, go away from it because they don't have a better understanding because of the pain that people have inflicted on them. You know, so I don't understand, like, how do you move from so much pain, you know, to just not having any pain? or just looking at this person and say well it happened and it happened so that's fine you know and just move on because for me i have the struggle where you know as much as i want to move on and let it be there are times when i still think about it and once i think about the situation it just takes me a different route and then when he takes me that route, I'm like, God, I know that I'm not right with you. God, I know that I'm doing something right. And the Lord will say, no, healing is a process. You have to allow me to take you through the process, you know. And most often we will blame whatever it is that is causing us that pain at that time. But the Lord made me to understand that, see, over years we have maxed pain disappointment people have done us wrong and you know instead of us to allow the lord to heal us most often it's because we're not even right with god and even the ones that are right with god don't don't want to wait for god's time you know for the healing process so we just keep masking this pain one after the other and so when god wants to heal you god says i have to go to the roof i will not just heal you at the top I have to go to the root and heal you from the root, you know, and so that takes time. But I mean, I don't understand it. You know, the work with God for me, I'm still um, like I tell people, I don't know much, but I, it's interesting, you know, so I don't know how, how it feels when God restores. When God restores. You forget about yourself. Many will never understand this. When God restores, you forget about yourself. Yes, it's just like Jesus. Jesus was ostracized. He was beaten. He was lied on. He was talked about. But he still went to the cross. He still went to the cross and died for all of our sins. Lord have mercy. And so that is what pulled me together. I did ask for a separation and it was good. It was good. And the good thing about it is my husband worked out of town a lot. So it helped. But I did cut off communication except for bills and things like that. 
And so when we get to that point where we are so burning down in so much pain, the only thing we can do is go through the threshing floor and tell God to break us. Tell God to please rebuke us, keep us, just take the pain away. But until we see it as Jesus saw it, Jesus, Jesus went through all of that, that the Father may be glorified and that we may obtain the Holy Spirit. We can go through, whether it's male or female, we can go through that pain of frustration, of adultery, of fornication. We can go through that pain of lies. We can go through that pain, whatever it may be. We can go through that pain because we know Jesus went through the pain. Now, will it be easy? No, but we are the, when, when those thoughts land in our mind, see, I was still able to work. I was still able to carry on and preach God's word, knowing that I was in pain. But one thing I did not do, I did not hide behind my struggle. And that is what a lot of marriages and a lot of people do. If they really told their testimony, then how many people will be made free? Yes, ma'am. How many people? But see, they got that pride. I can't say this. I'll just say a little bit of that. But when you don't tell the whole truth, you are a liar. You must tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth and the truth of the matter is is that we won't be honest with self because we blame ourselves i'm talking about me now we blame ourselves for how somebody treated us but then i remember jesus he never blamed himself he knew what he was getting into even from the beginning we know that relationship, we've been in relationships way back when. We know that sometimes they get rocky. Marriages get rocky and not only rocky, but mountains. We got to climb up mountains where we feel like we don't even have any strength. And so in order to get past the pain, you have to ask God, break you. You have to ask God to take you to a place that it will no longer bother you. And that is in the spirit because he said, those that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. And when we won't die to self, after someone has violated us, after, I'm just going to say, after our husbands have cheated, after our husband had talked to us upside down, after our husband or the wife, it could go both ways. All I'm saying is when it comes, you have to find a way to put your mind with Jesus' mind. He said, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. You must be crucified. Nevertheless, you live not yet you, but the Christ that liveth in you. And so when we go through trials and tribulations in marriage, we have to put ourselves where Jesus did. Jesus says, listen. Listen to this. Jesus told them, you can take my life, but in three days, I will rise again. And when we stop to think that there is a battle concerning marriages, and the battle is, you're trying to fight it by yourself. One can chase a thousand, but two can put 10,000 to flight. And so we hide. And then when we come out, man, it's all in the church. The first ladies all been through it. We hide. 
we really hide behind our own pain. We don't have to hide behind our own pain. We need to release our pain into the atmosphere. And so when it comes to our mind, we are the air traffic controller of our mind. We can let it land and take us to a place that we don't want to be, or we can just let it fly by. Not today, devil. Not today. And that kept me. When I said not today, but I will praise God. I found myself walking the floor all hours of the morning. I find myself one minute I'm laughing, the next minute I'm crying. One minute I'm saying, God, I can't take it no more. And then the next minute I'm saying, nevertheless. So we <laughs> don't do that thing over and over and over and over and over again. But marriage is ministry, but not ministry the way people think it is. Marriage is ministry suffering for Christ. Amen. We must suffer. He said, Paul said, what I want to know you in the fellowship of your suffering and the power of your resurrection. How will you know the suffering of God if you ain't never been through nothing? But until God's people, I'm talking about all over the land, stop hiding. And the devil know you hiding. And That's... you just come out and just say, listen, because you can only preach about what you go through and what you've been through. Yes, ma'am. You can't preach about nothing else about, listen, practice what we preach. Yes, ma'am. Um, like, um, what I want to say is this, you know, you know, I think that why a lot of marriages, aside from the fact that we play different roles, like God said, that we don't play our roles, we, we, in, we tend to play other people's roles. I think that the reason why most marriages, especially young marriages, crash is because all they know about is divorce. They know that once something is not going the right way in the marriage, the next thing is divorce, right? That's yeah. because people that have experienced restoration in marriage have not been able to come out and say, see, God can restore. I went through this and this was what God did. I think that if a lot of people that have gone through the process of, you know, um, hardship in marriage and God restore their marriages, come out to say, see, I have been through this. I have been through that. And this was how God restored my marriage. It will make people start to see that divorce is not the only option. It will make it will make people start to see that there is another option, which is called restoration by God. But I think that because most people see that once marriages have um, issues, the next thing is divorce. I think that's why a lot of young couples just you know get divorced once they they find themselves in places that they are not supposed to find themselves. Like for myself, when I. I you know, I'm in my marriage. I went through. You know, I'm still going through certain things, and. Most people that advised me were like, oh, you need to leave. Oh, you need to leave. And these are people that are supposed to be spiritual. You know, these are people that have been working with God for years. And I keep telling them, I say, God has not asked me to leave. And then even though myself, I wanted to leave because I was tired. I just couldn't do it anymore. Like it was taking all of me. You know, but whenever I pray, God will say, but I don't want you to go. I want you to sit put. That's why when you said what you said, you know, you just made sense to me. And that was exactly what I heard the Lord say. And there was even a time that I left the house, like I was just done. Mm -hmm. And after a couple of days, God said, because I didn't even pray about it because, you know, I already know what God told me. But I was so tired that I needed to just leave. And so I was like, God, right now, I don't want to hear anything that you have to say. I need to leave. And so I left. And God didn't say anything to me for like two or three days. I think the third day, that was when he said, you need to go back home. I said, but God, you know, you know, you, this cannot be your will for me. You know what I mean? You cannot. I, I can't. I just can't. If you love me as much as you say you love me, you cannot want to see me go through what I'm going through. Right. Mm -hmm. And God said, go back home. So I was like, OK, maybe God has resolved the situation. That's why he wants me to go back. Home. But then I went home the very next day the same issue happened the day after the same issue happened the day after the same issue and i was just crying i said god why would you even ask me to come back 
even though you know that this is what is going on you know what i mean so you already know that i'm gonna still go through this so why did you ask me to come back i was comfortable you know where i was yes it was taxing me so much because I had to go stay in the hotel. You know what I mean? And I didn't have that much money to be paying for the hotel. But then, you know, it gave me some sort of peace. Yeah. At least I wasn't in the environment where I was seeing what I was seeing or going through what I was going through. And so I was so mad at God. I was like, why would you ask me to come back? Are you the one that actually asked me to come back? Because, you know, sometimes when we're going through stuff, we might think that God is saying X, Y, Z, and God is not saying what he's saying. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I struggle with it a lot. Like, God, are you really the one that asked me to come back? Even though I heard him clearly you know and so i've been in this i've been in the marriage for this long and god has still not given me the go ahead to go mm -mm. even though everything about me wants to leave mm -mm. everything about me wants to leave but god has not said go and so because god has not asked me to go i can't go you know so it's a struggle and i thank god that i'm even going through all what i'm going through because now i can see certain things differently and i'm able to come out and talk when when we're done with this series i'll be able to talk about my story and maybe it's going to help somebody else and they will understand that when god says stay it means stay but I mean, if, if you decide to leave, God is God is a gentleman, like I tell people. He's not going to force you to stay. But if he says, my daughter, I want you to stay and you chose to leave, okay, he will still respect your wish. Yes. A lot yeah. of people get into marriage with false hope. Yes, that, that was my problem. Yeah, they think it's going to be a fairy tale. It's yes. It's not a fairy tale. Marriage is work. I can never say that is not work in proverbs 18 i found my scriptures in proverbs 18 22 it said whosoever who said whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtain favor of the lord whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtain favor of the lord so once a man finds you it's a good thing Yes, ma'am. And he obtained favor of the Lord. God reigns on the just, just as well as the unjust. And that's why he said, listen, seek ye first the kingdom. Our ways are not God's ways. Yes, ma'am. They're not ours. He's, he's so beyond us. In Matthew 19, 4 through 6, and he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female, and said, For this cause shall a man leave the father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they and they twine shall be one flesh? Wherefore, they are no more twined, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Let no man. <laughs> and guess what? That man, he said man, he's talking about woman too. Talk yeah. To mm -hmm. Don't choose to put nothing that, that you, you know, whether you got yourself in it or, you know, I, I ordained it. Listen. God can turn it around. He, he told Hosea, Hosea to marry a prostitute. God can change things around. It's just will we believe it. Why? Submit yourself unto your own husband. Your own husband, not someone else's husband. <laughs> You do not submit yourself to another husband mm -hmm. as it is fit in the Lord. Husbands, love your wife and be not bitter toward them. And that is a man. That is most men, not all men. They are bitter towards their wife because of the anointing that's on the wife 
life. They get jealous of their own wife. Jesus. Let me read Hebrews. Jesus. No, I wasn't even finished there. I just, oh, have mercy. Hmm. <laughs> Let me go. That was Colossians, the third chapter, 18 and 19. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed is undefiled. But whoremongers and adultery, God will judge. That's Hebrews 13 and 4. That's why God's saying, if it happened, I'm going to judge them. You don't judge them. I'm going to judge them. God know how to make us fall to our knees. He know how to make us fall to our knees. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above ruby. There is a difference between a wife and a harlot. There's a difference between a wife and a whore. And our husbands know the difference. And so when they go out and mess with these women, Lord have mercy, Jesus. <laughs> Lord have mercy, Jesus. Um, ma'am, you said something very uh, significant, and uh, you were saying that uh, most of us think that marriage is a fairy tale. And for me, you know, like I read a lot of romance novels, I watched a lot of movies. I'm that kind of person, and so I already had this idea of what you know I think the marriage is, or how I would like my marriage to be. And I felt in my spirit that oh, once I marry the uh, the, the man that I want. And then I serve God in the sense that I pray, you know, because then I wasn't really in this kind of relationship with God. But I just believe that, okay, if I serve God, I pray, I go to church and all that, you know, my marriage will be perfect. Like my marriage will be okay. You know, so I think most people have that kind of um, mentality when they come into marriage. They just think that, oh, marriage is all that they see in movies or, you know, all that they see out there. And so when they come into marriage and things are not happening that way, you know, it, it, it just it's like a rude um what's a, a rude shock or something i don't know the word to use you know and so most often they want to react and like no this is not what i want this is not how i want it and everything you know and so they want to leave so for me i i feel like a lot of people end up getting a divorce because people are not willing to come out to say see i've been through it and you know god god restored my marriage like god did this god can do it because even me too sometimes i'll be asking i say god can you really restore this because i feel like i've gotten to that place in my marriage where i'm just there because god wants me to be there yes you know what i mean like i'm not there because i want to be there mm -hmm. but i'm too afraid to go against the will of god yeah. And if God has not said to me, my daughter, this is what I want you to do, you know, I, I can't do anything else. I have to just sit back and watch. Yes. yes. You know, but most people don't. And I bless God for even equipping me to this level. There are days that I, I said, God, see, I can't do this anymore. But I thank God for equipping me to the extent where I've stayed for this long, you know, and still looking on to God to say, God, I don't know what you want to do. Like, if this is your will, let your will be done. But I'd rather just go. At this point, like, I feel like I'd rather just go. But God has said, no, but that's not my will for you. Yes. Okay. And so there my is. struggle is, I'm sorry, man. My struggle okay. is that, okay, so is it your will to see me in pain? Or is it your will to see me, you know, um go through what i go through you know it's it's crazy that um you know we don't really understand certain things when we do certain things like before when i was single i did a married man and i never really saw anything wrong in it because i felt like oh we, we have the understanding that i don't want you you know what i mean you don't want me you're not stressing me because i felt that they were more what's the word to use more understanding you know like they don't stress you like okay we will just have an understanding that this is this and this is that right i'm not expecting anything from you you're not expecting anything from me but then it was like a way of life where i come from where it's just now that you know as a single girl that you have a married boyfriend you know and so i don't I, when when my issues with my husband started my husband started cheating 
I initially I felt like, okay, this is karma. Like this is God paying me back for the things that I did, you know? And I prayed and said, God have mercy upon me. But it was most times we might do things and not really understand the gravity of what we're doing until we find ourselves in the situation, you know? And it's crazy because when this thing started happening to me, I started to imagine what these wives that, you know, the people that I dated their husbands felt while I was dating their husband. Even though I was very careful about, you know, wives not finding out that I dated their husband or whatever stuff. But, you know, it's it's one way or the other, the wife is just going to know that her husband is cheating. Yeah. You know. You know? And so, um, I don't know you know if people feel the same way like okay god is just paying me back for what i did you know when i was single and um but god says no i am forgiving you you know but you know there is there's always consequences to our actions yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, can, I can tell you god god's not paying back anything but blessings to us yeah. to surrender unto the lord <laughs> and all that old stuff we did has been thrown in the sea of forgetfulness. He don't even remember it. <laughs> we be bringing it up to him and he'd be like, I don't even know what you're talking about. But marriage is such a work that if you're not built for it, what they say about the kitchen. If it's too hot, then get out the kitchen mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. But it's not that easy. It's easy to get into, but it's very hard to get out. Yes, we are. God knows your heart. God knows our hearts. He knows what we can take. He knows what we cannot take. Mm -hmm. But when we sit down and really look at that movie, uh, uh, The Passion of Christ, and we put ourselves, we are the bride. And Jesus is the bridegroom. When we sit and look at that, how can we leave Jesus? How can Jesus leave us? Because we are not perfect and because we are imperfect people mm -hmm. trying to make things right. It just behoove us all to allow this, this flesh to die daily. In order to stay in your marriage, listen, it's easy to leave and go get a divorce. Hmm? It's harder <laughs> to stay in it and allow your flesh to die. Woo! Allow <laughs> your flesh to be peeled off. <laughs> And everyone that runs away quickly, guess what? Usually God will send them back and never listen to people. Just Tune bam. out everybody because people will tell you, get a divorce. This is somebody else will tell you, no, don't do this. Listen, listen to the still small voice inside of you. And that is what I counsel people. Listen to the voice that's with the side of you because you can leave premature just as surely there is a premature death. Yes, ma'am. And a lot of times God pe God's people do not understand when you got into this marriage, marriage ain't sex. You see, people think marriage is sex marriage is going out on the town and no that ain't marriage marriage every marriage will hit rough spots every marriage i don't care how happy lucky they seem i don't care how many pictures they put up and this and that listen marriage will break you yes, or marriage will make you Either or, it's up to you. I just decided to die to myself. And that's how I know that I was able to stay put. Let me read this. Ephesians 5, 25 and 26. Husband, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church 
and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. 1 Corinthians 7, 2. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. Amen. When, when, when my husband when my husband was out there cheating, I hope he don't see this, but anyway, <laughs> if, if he does, he if he does he he if he does he knows the truth um when he when he was out there flipping and dipping and diving and carrying on god didn't allow me to be mean to him he said the only god he's gonna see is in you yes ma'am and he did get saved amen and hallelujah I never could be mean but i muted myself because I know if I did not mute myself, it was going to be on and popping. <laughs> Man, you just said it. Like, I'll sit back sometimes. I'm like, God, is this me, though? Because I know who I used to be. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I'm not that kind of woman that waits. Like, let's see who does it better. You know what I mean? That's the kind of mentality or the kind of person that I used to <laughs> Oh, thank God for the blood of Jesus. Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm. God knows. God just has a way of breaking us all yes. and you know, molding us to become the person that he wants us to be. Mm, mm, just today, somebody sent me a text and I was like, I don't even want to reply to this text. You know what I mean? Mm, mm. And then I was like, God, I, do, I really thank you because this is not me anymore. Mm, 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 mm. This is not me anymore. Like I couldn't even imagine it. Like just saying hello. Somebody just texted and say hello. But for the fact that you are your male, I don't want to text you back. Right, right. You know, but honestly, who I used to be, I'm like, oh, okay, what's up? You know, because you're you're lonely too. You know, yeah. your marriage is not going the way that you want it to go. Mm -hmm. And me, I have this belief where I feel like the best way to get over any problem when it comes to the opposite sex is getting somebody else you know mm -hmm. and that works for me you know when i was single that works for me a lot so i i didn't really stick around to find out how it feels i just you know move right. because yeah. i believe that you know once you're with somebody else you tend to forget the other person very quickly mm -hmm. but i just said god i thank you just today i just said god the person was asking me hey how are you you know i didn't bother to reply you know and I keep asking myself, God, I don't, I don't know how you're doing it, but who have become, I really like this me mm. because I am that kind of person that likes to pay back. You know, I, like if you do me, I want to do it to you too. <laughs> so you understand how painful it yeah. is, you know, but I thank yeah. God for, um, for what he has done and so the question i want to ask you today man what what advice do you have for you know people out there that are going through you know one form of struggle or the other in their marriage you know that are thinking that the best the best um decision to make is to get a divorce what do you what what um what advice do you have for them my counsel i will always tell uh whether it's male or female to be still do not move, because if you move too fast, then you became you become in direct disobedient to God. But if you can just be still, find a hobby, find something to get into. I'm not talking about no another relationship. <laughs> but listen to this, listen to this. I don't understand. I will never understand. Men and women can be friends. And they don't have to cross over and have sex mm -hmm. because there is a lot of things you can find out about uh like when my husband was cheating i was talking to these other guys that, that was married that was me and they mm -hmm. was telling me did you look for this did you look for that the sign was already there but i was not looking for it but it was there you got me the signs were there but i were not looking for it and I just would tell people, pay attention to the signs, pay attention to the pattern, 
pay attention to the bitterness because they can get real bitter. You ask them one question and they blow off the handle, but let them talk to somebody else on the phone. They so nice and so kind. Let them go out mm -hmm. to the store. They so nice and so kind <laughs> to the store. I mean, <laughs> and then you saying, who is this person? I'm telling you. I would, I would just, I, I really would just say pray. Definitely pray. And I tell women, even if your husband's not saved, when he sleeps, just anoint him. Pray over him. And we as women are charged to pray over these men, men over the women, the same thing. But until we die to ourselves, and that's the first thing. When you find yeah. out, I want to tell every woman out there, every woman in the land and every country, if you find out that your significant other, your spouse, have creeped on you, do not lose it. Do not lose it. God says, vengeance is mine yes lord and i will repay all you're waiting for is payday and surely it will come mm -hmm. and you will receive the blessings of the lord that maketh rich and addeth no sorrow because you have your peace you have your joy you held on to your faith even in all the pain. So I would say just be encouraged, get in your word even the more. If you cannot find yourself, you can't read, then play it. Listen to it. And God will change. Mm -hmm. God will change. God will change in one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's what i will say all right ma'am so basically what you're saying is that um with god there's always restoration yes yes always restoration always is there he said so are men to love their wives as their own body and he that loveth his wife he that he that loveth his wife loveth himself mm-hmm can I tell you a secret? It's really not a secret. A lot of a lot of men, they have multiple women because they don't love themselves. Exactly. They are trying to find their mama. They're trying to find that breast or the way their mother changed them, even though they have a wife. They won't tell the wife everything because they too ashamed. Oh, Rabba, sick. Man is okay to tell your wife, your wife or wives. The truth. Even back to the childhood, a lot of them act out. It's not that they want another woman. It just makes them feel need it. It makes them feel important. But if you are in a relationship with a married man, he's going back to his wife. <laughs> oh my God, damn. <laughs> Today I got a text message from a lady and she sent me a photo of my husband and she said, oh, you can have him back. I don't need him anymore. I said, no, you must keep him. Mm -hmm. I said, no, you must keep him. She said, no, thanks. I don't want him. I said, really? You know, but I just thought about it. What's the essence of even, you know, replying the lady? It's pointless. So I just, I just ended it at that. But, you know, it's, it's just funny that, you know, women will think, you know, men can say whatever thing that they want to say just because they want to sleep with you. Right.
And so most often they say what they say, you know, to make the other woman feel some right. type of way. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And and so most women just get carried away. And that was the good thing for me when I was single, because, you know, I just understood that this is this and this. I don't want you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't I don't want to own you. I just, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it was, was what it was for us, because I just didn't want to go through any outbreak or stress or all this kind of stuff. So. But, you know, I just looked at a lady and apparently she believed all that my husband said to her, you know, um, whatever it is that he said to her, I don't know. But and so she acted, she was thinking that, you know, my husband was going to leave me and, and come be with her. But the truth is that even though I, I, I tell him every day, please go, like I'm tired, I don't want this. He doesn't leave. Mm -hmm. You know, so apparently she got the message today probably that oh this man is not going to leave his wife and so you know she's telling me now that i can have him back <laughs> like she's not yeah, like because she put the pressure on him oh divorce her divorce, her. divorce. that's what they say divorce your <laughs> wife divorce your wife divorce your wife divorce you think it's that easy <laughs> and then you'll go through worse than what you took her through it's not worth it it's just not worth it. I tell anybody that's dating a married man, just please get out. Get out because he's lying. He's not <laughs> telling the truth. He is not telling the truth at all. He's not telling the truth. And that's just the fact. He's not. Wow. Wow. <laughs> it's, it, look, it's, it's, not, it's not an easy thing. And it's definitely not an easy thing to tell mm -hmm. that your marriage is on rocks. You of know course. what I'm saying? rocky road no. people won't do it but they don't know if they do it then it will help somebody else exactly that's hiding come out and be okay to talk to you exactly but they act like they got it all together oh me and my man this and me and my <laughs> man that and me and my husband this and me. yeah okay until y'all get home sleeping in separate <laughs> rooms sleeping on the floor sleeping on the couch god has brought certain people my way you know because of what i've been through and i yes. thank god that i've been able to help them in a little way i mean i just tell them say i've been through this i know how it feels but this is this and this is and i keep telling them see there's nothing god can do even though you know i'm going through what i'm going through i still tell them that see there is nothing god cannot do yeah. you know god doesn't want you to leave that's one thing that i know for sure you know and all that so I, I bless God that, you know, despite my, despite my pain, you know, it has also helped one or two persons, you know, in a good way. So it sometimes is, it's good to go through the pain. It is going to help save the life of somebody. Yes. Yes. You know, so if people can really be honest and come out and say, see, you're not, you're not alone. I have been through this. People are yes. going through it every day. There yes. is no shame in Jesus, mm -hmm. you know, but if, when you, when you don't have Jesus, then you're ashamed and you want to hide it. Like, you know, nobody wants to let anybody know that their marriage is going through stress or their husband is even stepping outside the marriage because, you know, instantly as a woman, like, oh, her husband cheats. That means she's not this or she's not that. And she's mm -hmm. not that. And I told one of the ladies are called me I said see there are times when I come online and I don't feel like praying for others because I've just gone through it and the enemy has a way of coming at me you know the days that I want to come on and uh, come online and it's the seat for people just either just before or after right. and I told her, I said see don't mind the way that you see me come out and smile mm -hmm. and you know um wake up and all that you think that all is well see I I know sometimes I've been crying for days mm -hmm. you know what I mean and she was like, oh, my God, I wish people would come. She said she saw a lady that was posting um, photos of she and her husband. And she started asking herself, like, why is my marriage not like that? You know, why is my marriage not like that? And, you know, once the husband does something, she just tends to, you know, um, feel some type of way. Because she has seen the pictures that this person is posting or portraying and she thinks that that's how it's supposed to be and i too was there too at some point you know like this is how marriage is supposed to be but that's why god will allow the enemy to come in so he will bring you to that place where he wants you to be so you understand that you marrying this person is not just because you want to be married but because you want to fulfill this will you yes. know
Oh, we give God praise, ma'am. Can you pray for? Hallelujah. Yes. Can we pray for? Um, pray for you know people that are going through it right now. Um, yes. for God to you know touch them and. Yes. <laughs> Ma'am, Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we just praise you and we bless your name. Amen. We magnify you for you alone are worthy to be praised. Yes, Lord. God, we thank you for trouble mm -hmm. in the kingdom. We thank you for the kingdom of God suffers balance mm -hmm. and the balance taken by force. God, we just pray right now that you touch every marriage yeah. everyone that will hear this message god that you would touch their marriage god and that both will die to themselves mm -hmm. and they will only see you jesus mm -hmm. they will only see you holy spirit mm -hmm. that they will honor the father Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you. We love the way that you father us. Mm -hmm. And we want to thank you for that woman that is in pain, for that woman that's been crying, that woman that feels like I just cannot take it anymore. Mm -hmm. Lift up your eyes unto the hills for which cometh forth your help. Mm -hmm. Your help is coming from the Lord even right now. Amen. Even after you hear this, he said that he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. Hear the word of the Lord. Amen. Begin to worship and praise God like never before. Amen. If you cannot muster up a prayer, begin to moan and groan. God said, I even will hear that too. Mm -hmm. In the mighty name of Jesus, that goes for male or female. Hallelujah. Oh God, we're asking you to touch the husbands, Lord. Mm -hmm. And we're asking you, God, that you take the heart, the hardened heart, the stiff neck, the heart that controls them and have them doing things against your will. God, take out the stony heart and give them a heart of flesh, Ooh. a heart that will cause them to be more sensitive to their wives, mm -hmm. a heart that will cause them to treat their wives like Christ mm -hmm. uh, teach the church. Mm, Lord have mercy. Treat <laughs> the church. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And every husband, every husband will begin to study how Christ loves the church. Mm -hmm. That he will love his wife knowing that she is the weaker vessel. Mm -hmm. Husbands will no longer take advantage of their wives no longer of the tricks and the games. Mm. There will be conversations whether they agree or disagree. Mm. That they will be able to come to the knowledge of the truth and the truth is you're able to restore. Mm. You are the restore. You are the repairer of the breach. Mm. God, we thank Thank you for what you're going to do in marriages. We don't have to fake. We don't have to act like our marriage is all this and all that when we know it's not so. Yes. We will begin to share our testimonies to help others. Amen. But not only help others, when we share our testimony, it helps us we too are being delivered yes, lord. Mm. lord we just thank you thank you father lord we just thank you thank we you. thank you for what you're going to do mm -hmm. and we thank you for how you're going to move mm -hmm. we thank you for this marriage series yes, we lord. thank you god mm -hmm. we thank you for this series concerning the marriages yes, lord. 
God, heal every marriage. Mm. Heal, God. Mm. Deliver, God. Mm. Take the yoke from around the neck. Mm. Oh, Lord Jesus. Mm. Order the steps. Mm. Bring them back to their vows. Mm. Bring them back to their vows. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I hear the Lord saying, Tell my people, I'm in a still, small voice. He's whispering mm. to give us instructions, even for this week, mm. that we will prosper in the things of God. Amen. We will. We have the victory. In mm -hmm. Jesus' name, we will, Lord. We have the victory in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you for the victory, God. Thank you. Thank God. you for victory. Thank 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 you for victory. Don't give up. There's a woman that wants to leave, even she's listening. Or she will listen. She wants to leave. And people have told her to leave. Stay put. Be still and know that he's God. Hallelujah. Be still and know that he's God. Hallelujah. There is a man that wants to leave. Stay put. The grass mm -hmm. is not green on the other side. Yes. Just stay put. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's easy to run and get a divorce. It's harder to stay put. But when we stay put, we will begin to see the victory. Mm. We will begin to see the victory victory in how we have overcome. Mm. And Lord, we just thank you. Thank you, Father. It's not easy, but it's worth it. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I love you so much. Love you too, man. Thank you so much for coming. Yes, you know, tell us a part of your story and speaking what the Lord wants you to speak. And I know that you have helped some people, you know, somebody somewhere is going to see this video and hear what you have said. And the person's hope is going to be restored to know that, yes, indeed, God can restore, you know, if only we're willing and willing to do it his way you know and not our way most often one things to happen our way and god is saying no but i am god is also up on the way that i want it you yes. know mm -hmm. so i thank god for using you you know to speak restoration to his people i thank god for um using you to speak his word to us today god bless yes. you god bless, you. bless you, Mary. Love you. <laughs> Love you super. thank you so much right. okay. bye man yes ma'am Lord, we thank you. We'll give you praise for what you have done. Father, we'll give you honor. We'll give you glory. Lord, I thank you. I just want to thank you because I know, Father, that you have done what no man can do. So those of us out there that are struggling one way or the other in our marriage that are thinking that the best option is for us to leave, you know, even though people have told us that, yes, divorce is the way, we're yet to let you understand understand our God. Our God is a God of restoration. You know, God can restore if only we're willing to do it his way. So don't be in a hurry to dash out there. Sometimes God allows the enemy to come in, you know, to bring you to that place where he, God wants you to be. You know, so God will put you through the process in order for you to be the woman that he wants you to be. Like for myself, I thought that was being the perfect wife. I already had, you know, all these things in my head. Oh, this is how a wife is supposed to be. Or oh, this is how this these are the things that a wife is supposed to do. You know, but God had to put me through the process to bring me to this place where I am today, where I understand that even as human, first and foremost, I'm not perfect, so I have my faults as well, you know. And God is the only one that can actually show you you. No one can show you yourself aside from God, you know. And so I'm encouraging you to understand that, yes, it's painful. Yes, you know, it seems like it's never going to end. Yes, it might be, you know, all that. But in the process, you will also find out that 
God is faithful. In the process, you also get to see yourself, who you were and who you are now, if you allow God to bring you through it. Okay? So divorce is not the option. Divorce is not the option. If you believe that God is the God of restoration, if indeed you believe in God, then this is a time for you to go on your knees and say, God, I don't know I'm going to do this. I don't want to be in this situation. I don't want to be here right now. But I trust you and I believe in you and I have faith in you that you're going to do what only you can do. And so if it is the will of God, it's going to happen just the way that he wants it to happen. Okay? So don't just rush to say, oh, because he cheated. Oh, because he did this. Oh, because that thing happened. I want to go. I was there. I was there. I'm still there. <laughs> okay? But God has kept me. Sometimes I don't even understand how God has kept me till now. So if God can keep me, he can keep you too. Okay? So God is a God of restoration. Divorce is not the option. Trust him. Believe in him. Give yourself hope and say, God, let your will be done. All I want to do is serve you and submit to you. Maybe God is using that situation to bring you to that place where you have an intimate relationship with him. Sometimes, you know, we, we tend to make God, we tend to put others before God. And our God is a jealous God. Nobody comes before God. So if unknowingly you have put your husband before God, God is going to let the enemy come in so you understand that he's God and he's number one. And like I told us the, from the beginning, when we get married, we're not just getting married. We're not just going into covenant with our spouse. We're also going into covenant with God. God comes first. God is the heir, then the husband. But most often, because we're so excited about who, who we got married to or we're so excited that we're married or whatever the reason is, you know, we tend to forget and begin to worship our spouse unknown to us or begin to put our spouse before God. And our God is a jealous God. Okay? So even though it's sad and it's painful and it's whatever it is, I want you to understand that if you look closely, you will see what God is doing. God will begin to change your perspective, your mindset through that pain. So sit put and know that it is God. All right, people. I love you, but God loves you so much more. Next Sunday, we're going to be on again for part two of marriage as ordained by God. And as we go on, God is going to heal us. God is going to do a lot of things in our lives. But the promise that he gave me was that in the course of us doing what we're doing, his healing is going to come upon a lot of people. So if you're going through it, trust God. He's able to heal you. He's able to bring you out of it. He's able to do even much more than you can. God is the only one that can change anybody. You can change anybody. God is the only one that can change. He said the acts of kings are, his, are in his hands and turns them like rivers or whichever way that he wants. So God can change the heart of that person. It might be your wife. It might be your husband. You know, we're not just talking to the women. We're also talking to the men because there are men that are going through things too. Where the woman can sit one place and she's moving from one place to the other and they can't even talk about it because they are ashamed. It is shameful to know that, you know, uh, um, your spouse is cheating. It is it's a shameful thing. It takes a lot of guts to even tell somebody about it. Because instantly it makes you feel like you have failed as a husband or as a wife. But I want you to know that you haven't failed. You haven't failed. There's still so much for you. There is still so much for you. God still has a lot to show you. Just keep holding on and believing God. And know that he's able to do. All right, people? If you don't have a relationship with God, this is today is a good day for you 
to cry out unto the Lord and say, God, have mercy upon me. But we need to understand that when we want to walk with God, we have to be holy. Our God is the holy God. You cannot be living in sin and expect to see the end of God. No. So if you don't have that intimate relationship with God, if you have not truly repented, for me, it was in the course of my marriage struggle that I actually repented. All this while I thought I've repented, but God showed me that, no, my daughter, you just shut the door to the things that you have done. You never really repented. And so I got to understand that there's a big difference between saying I repent and, you know, professing and Jesus and praying the prayer of sinners and truly repenting from your heart. Most of us will repent with our mouth without repenting from our heart. Because if you repent from your heart, you're going to see those things as what they really are and say, God, have mercy. I can't even believe I did that. And you would never want to go back there. Even when the enemy tries to pull you there, you would never want to go back there because you know that God has already delivered you from it. So basically what I'm saying is that don't just repent with your mouth but repent with your heart and really see those things that you have done as what they really are seen and turn away and begin to forge this relationship with God where you're obedient and submissive to God, not to anybody. Most often we tend to submit to man and not submit to God. And I tell us every time man will advise you based on his flesh. Men will lead you based on their flesh, but the Holy Spirit would never lead you based on his flesh. <laughs> it is the Spirit of God. So when you listen to that still small voice, you always get it right. It might not seem right, even to yourself. But that's where the obedience and submission comes to God. This doesn't seem right, God. This is not right, God. But God is saying, my child, that is what I want. And so you just keep doing what he has asked you to do. You know? And not what man has asked you to do. And I want you to understand that when you start to work with God really intimately, you will come to know that a lot of things that you have heard and a lot of things that you've come to know are going to be contrary to what God will be showing you, to what God, the Holy Spirit will be teaching you. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. He knows everything. So why don't you just forge this relationship with God and begin to be led by the Spirit of God and not by your flesh or by man and see the salvation of God. So hold on, have faith, trust God. He has done it for thousands of people. He can do it for you. Okay, people. So I hope to see you on Sunday at 6. We'll be talking about marriage as ordained by God, part 2. And people will be sharing their stories. And then you will understand that you are not alone. There is nothing you're going through that people have not gone through. And they will be here to let you know that God brought them through. And how God brought them through. All right, people. All right. God bless you. Like I said, I love you, but God loves you so much more. Father, I thank you for the great works that you have done. I thank you for the lives of your people. I thank you for those that your healing hand have come upon. Father, Lord, I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you praise. I thank you, Jehovah, needs to the exchange of days for your love towards your people. Thank you for the conviction of heart. Yes, you are watching. Don't let go. The Holy Spirit is convincing your heart right now, telling you that my child, sit put. Sit put and see God. Okay? If you have your story, if you have any story you want to share with us, you're welcome. You can call us or send us um, a private message. And we'll bring you on for you to share your story because the essence is for us to reach as many people as possible to understand that God is able, that our God is alive. We don't need to conform to the, to the standard of the world. God can do it. He's in the business of restoration. So don't give up. No matter how long it has been, God can. All right? All right, people. See you on Sunday at 6 p.m. Ciao. Love you. <laughs>
God bless you all.